if you are just like our president, Cyril Ramaphosa, constantly shocked and surprised at the state of our politics, well, I've got just the series for you. Welcome to Know Your Politics. My name is Luvom Nyobe, and in this episode, we discuss Cyril Ramaphosa and the ANC's handling of corruption within government. Now, this year, the president has had to answer as to how his spokesperson, Kusela Diko's husband, received a multi-million rand tender for PPE provision in Gauteng. Will there be consequences this time around? The ANC in the Gauteng has summoned Kusela Diko, MEC Bandile Masuku and uh, Loiso Masuku to explain themselves to the party. Kusela Diko has now taken a leave of absence from her duties as the president's spokesperson. But all of this makes me wonder, how could someone so close to the president ignore the simple concept of a conflict of interest? It's simple, really. When you are working for the state, you can't do business with the state. That would be like winning the lottery when your spouse is a chairperson of the lottery board. It's just not a good look for anyone involved. Now, these allegations reveal the fact that even the most trusted politicians can be involved in dodgy dealings. Here is Ramaphosa promising to stand firmly against corruption during his campaign. Corruption has to be brought to a stop and it must happen with immediate effect. Cyril Ramaphosa's victory in the election for head of South Africa's ruling ANC party makes him likely to become South Africa's next president. Ramaphosa has promised to bring the appeal back to the ANC party, deeply weakened by the economic crisis and allegations of corruption against Jacob Zuma. Obviously, corruption was always going to be a difficult challenge for any South African president. But for Ramaphosa, it's seemingly the people closest to him who are giving him the biggest headaches. Remember his son and his dealings with Busasa? Andile Ramaphosa, his son, did consultancy work for uh, Busasa, the company that has massive tenders with the Department of Correctional Services. He went on to donate 500,000 rands to Cyril Ramaphosa's presidential campaign, a move seen by many as securing further tenders for Busasa with government. The National Prosecuting Authority is to probe whether President Cyril Ramaphosa's CR17 campaign was used mm -hmm. to launder money. While the president hasn't been personally fingered into the allegations of corruption and money laundering, it does bring into question whether he is indeed the right man to fight against corruption. If you consider the fact that he was the right-hand man to Jacob Zuma, who at the, at the time was facing over 18 charges of corruption. What did the ANC do, you may ask? Well, they did absolutely nothing and protected him from scrutiny in Parliament. When will President Zuma appear before the National Assembly? Members of this very House prevented the President from answering all the questions that he wanted to answer. So what more do you want? It was under Ramaphosa's watch that President Zuma took the whole country for a ride. In a question and answer session with Parliament, Zuma took the time to role play as a comedian, except he wasn't funny at all. Point of order. Yes. Nkanza. Tix was a judge cook. There is a broken president in a broken country. Do you know? My babo. Not much has changed since Zuma's left office. In the past 25 years, we've only had only a single ANC leader being convicted for corruption, and that is Tony Yengeni. And just last year, senior ANC leader and former parliamentary speaker, Bale Gambete, travelled to the Oxford Union for an interview with Mehdi Hassan, embarrassing the whole country with her comedic style of politics. Can you tell our viewers what position uh, Tony Yengeni, this ex-convict, was appointed to by the ANC last year? Position? Yeah, he was appointed to chair of the working group on corruption. In the ANC political life, yeah. we look at things sometimes not exactly the way other people yeah, see I them. Yeah, I can agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Ha ha, it seems funny, but it's us, everyday South Africans, who are the jokes in the political circus that is ANC politics. So what's my take? My take is that you can't take seriously any government that commits to fighting against corruption if that fight doesn't result in conviction of senior leaders in government. Thank you for tuning in to Know Your Politics. My name is Lou Vomnyobe, and it's been lovely having you.